I'm here at Vero's Velo at Lane End, and guess what I have in my hands today? The Factor Ostro Van. Been wanting to get my hands on one of these for ages, and now finally I am here. I'm gonna be running it through my 10 categories just to try and give you an idea of what the bike feels like to ride. I'm not gonna do any speed tests and stuff because realistically, you need a wind tunnel or a velodrome to be accurate with that. So I'm just gonna give you the idea of the sensation of speed, what it's like for comfort. You know what, I'm just gonna chuck a list on the side here so you know what's coming up. And if you wanna skip to the chapters below, you can go directly to them. But let's get on the bike. Guys, if you want to test these bikes out for yourself, I'm going to put a link down below. Over here at Virus Velo, they are doing it, so you can just book online and give one a test ride for yourself. Get on it. When it comes to speed and while well, the flats and the rolling, I've been really liking this thing. It's been different in terms of, I kind of have less sensation of speed, and I'm going to describe it in a way that you use like a Porsche and maybe like a Ford Fiesta. So when you're in a Porsche, you can be doing 80 miles an hour and you're barely feeling it. But 80 miles an hour in a Ford Fiesta feels like you're flying. And that's what this bike feels like. It feels like the Porsche. I mean, I've been going into a lot of headwind today, but I've been looking down at the Garmin. It's been saying, oh, you know, you do 41 Ks an hour. Not now, I'm going uphill. But uh, yeah, it just hasn't felt like 41 Ks an hour. It feels really stable at those higher speeds. Um, so whether you like the sensation of speed or not i don't know this one takes it away in a in a positive way like you just you're just going quickly on it some bikes feel in some ways like a time trial bike once you pull them up to speed they just hold the speed now this bike i'm not going to describe it like that what it feels like it feels like a very light climbing weight bike that is able to go very very fast so in terms of when you're pulling up to speed, it has no problem getting there. It has no problem holding it there either. But I do find as I come up the rises on the, the rolling bit, I feel like I slow down a little bit more than I do normally. But when you get close to the top, because it feels so great out the saddle, it's so easy just to pump the energy back into the bike. You get out the saddle, you pull yourself back up to speed as you just go over those smaller rollers and this bike, is as fast as anything else that you can ride. In essence, it's not slower, it's just that the behavior of the bike is different to others. As I sit between about 250 and 300 watts here, the bike just rolls, man. Especially along this UK kind of roads where nothing's flat. You're either rolling uphill or rolling downhill. Some steep bits, some twisty bits, but it just goes. One thing I'll add about the bike is that it's well, very long. Now for someone of my height, this doesn't matter too much, but if you're not the most flexible person in the world, uh, it might not be the bike for you. But the one thing the length really does is when you're trying to sit on your elbows like that, it makes it very easy to do so. I gotta say, spending time in position on this bike, as you put your elbows on the bars like this, it makes it easy to hold it. So when you want it to go fast and on the flats on the rolling, well, it's more comfortable to hold a more aero position for a longer period of time. I've really enjoyed that about the bike. When you're climbing in the saddle on this bike, it has, it does have that propulsiveness that you do get with other high-end bikes. So it feels like every pedal stroke that you're putting into the bike moves it forward up the hill. And it's just quite a nice feeling. Is it as propulsive as some other bikes that I felt in the saddle? Not as much, but safe to say it's still up there. It ranks really highly in terms of how it feels in the saddle. You just, it feels like no energy is lost and it's really good when you're going uphill. It kind of makes a 5% gradient feel like a 2% gradient and it makes a 7% gradient feel like a 4% gradient. You know, it's once again, I'm going back to that Porsche effect where the eliteness of the bike kind of makes the gradient or terrain feel easier to navigate and easier to roll along. When you're coming up to the latter stages of the climbs and you know when you're in the saddle and you're just pushing the power out, the bike feels like it starts to accelerate with you and just gets quicker and quicker as you really start to finish that climb off. So I think the bigger the climbs get and you know when you start to push on that final K, this bike will really aid you in terms of your speed going up those climbs. When you're climbing out the saddle on this bike, it has more directness. Like 
I really like the way that you can almost feel the power translation when you're turning the bar side to side. It kind of goes through the top tube of the frame and down into the bottom bracket. You feel really connected and direct when you're out the saddle to this bike. I also found I was able to spend a lot of time out the saddle just because the bike was comfortable being there. Seems whatever you want to do with this bike, it is comfortable doing what it needs to do. And on some bikes, I feel like when I'm out the saddle, I get more tired. It doesn't seem to happen on this one. I've just done a climb back there. That sits at around 11% for about, well, about a K. And uh, yeah, it just seems to, the bike managed it just fine. I didn't get more tired from being out the saddle. When you're climbing, you don't want your hands on the hoods. You want them on the bars. This handlebar is nice. I, like, I actually like a flat bar. And this one feels really good, especially with a little bit of tape on there. Just seems to fit your hands in the right place whilst you're going up the hills. As I spend more time out the saddle on this thing, going up more steeper climbs, I think a lot of the kind of energy saving comes from the fact that the bike goes from side to side so easily when you're out the saddle and it just seems to work with you. I've been going for a while now on this bike and let's talk about the handling. And I'm gonna use a word that's gonna be used very frequently in this review and that is direct. So the way I want to describe how this bike feels when you're going around corners is there's kind of like a resistance as you try and tip it and as you try and lean into it. But this resistance doesn't hinder you. So the bike wants to be upright. It likes to go straight and it wants to be upright. But as you tip the bike over, as you get further and further over, it doesn't resist you anymore. It's the same resistance all the way through. So it kind of feels like you have this very like fine but controlled dial of how much turn and lean you want on the bike. And it just makes it easy to go around the corners. It doesn't fight you. It just says, it just is very feedbacky in how much angle you've got and just where the bike is through the turn essentially. It's also very adjustable, like mid corner. Like, I mean, we're here in the UK, the roads are terrible. So you're gonna be dodging potholes halfway through corners a lot. And this bike lets you do it. And like I said, once you get that resistance, it doesn't fight you. It just lets you know where you are in terms of how much more the bike's got to give. So yeah, if you need some mid corner adjustments, it just lets you do it, the bike is great for that. I am finding it harder to be out of the saddle on this bike. And I think that's because of the connectivity from the saddle to the bottom bracket. Just seems like every micro kind of adjustment you put into it changes where the bike wants to go. So it means you've got loads of control over your hips, but it means you also have to relearn the sensitivity of it a little bit. But to be quite frank, that'll take you less than two rides, I reckon. Not an issue whatsoever. I've just been doing some fairly steep descents over here. And I gotta say, I don't feel nervous at all on this bike. I feel like I'm just very happy to go on a new road, on a new bike, on this thing, and just basically go at full throttle on it down the hills. It makes it really comfortable and really stable to ride. So in terms of high speed handling, very good thumbs up from me. Well, I've done a few hours on the bike here now, and it's safe to say I feel like I've got a, a good feel for the comfort of it. And this is the UK, a good of test of any for the comfort. I mean, just have a look at the road surface. I'm gonna overlay on the video here. It's kind of like most of the way. So I gotta say, I've come off this thing feeling pretty damn fresh. And the front end, you don't really get much chatter, much vibration. I'm not saying it's completely chatter free like a endurance bike would be, but it really holds its own. Back end, once again, absorbs the vibrations very well. Does not buckaroo at all. Um, and I think when you're really pedaling hard, you, you know how you kind of get kicked on some bikes. It kind of takes you off the power for half a second. Not with this thing. It just kind of keeps chowing through and rolling through. And I think it really saves the vibration, especially if you check out just how skinny this seat post is. It's unbelievable. It's amazing. And well, I'm gonna show a bit more when I do a walk around in the next few weeks of some of these bikes. So you can really see the finer details and the tube shapes because, well, I think the front end and the rear end of this bike is well designed and very cool. I've stopped at my next destination here to chat to you about the weight of the bike and does it feel light when it's underneath you? Now I haven't actually weighed it in on purpose. I'll potentially weigh it next time when I come back to film the walk around of this thing. But underneath you, it does feel like a light bike. And 
You know when you made that mistake where you pull up to a red light, you didn't change down, even though you were in a really hard gear, this bike feels light and it just lets you pull away. You, as you put that power down, it just feels like it goes into movement and it's the same up the hill. Every single pedal stroke feels like the bike moves forward and part of that is because of the weight of the thing. It feels light underneath the body. Does that make it a dead lightweight frame? Not necessarily. Does this mean it feels like a five kilo bike, like an ultra lightweight climbing thing? Not necessarily, but it is designed to do everything as good as possible. And it's probably quite close to that UCI weight limit. Yeah, every time I want to push on this thing, it definitely accelerates really fast, giving the sensation of a very light bike. I suspect the reason that it feels like this is probably because of the wheels. You know, the lighter and the stiffer the wheels are, the more the bike feels accelerative, the lighter it feels, the more propulsive it feels. And Let's talk about the wind stability of this bike. And as you can probably tell behind me, today's an exceptionally windy day, even down here in the lanes. So um, I gotta say it performs well, just like pretty much every modern bike does. I think mainly wind stability comes down to tire, a wheel design and the black inks seem to be handling it very, very well. I haven't been thrown off at all really, which I'm very impressed with. So wind stability, very stable on this bike. There's not much else to say. I did think that this like really deep head tube and these really deep forks here was gonna be affected a bit more in the wind. As I said, it has been really windy today, but it hasn't. And it does run a mullet setup, so you've got 48 on the front here and you've got a 58 on the back over there. And I personally like the mullet setup, a bit more air at the back, but a bit more stable on the front and this bike does it well. Let's go into sprinting on the bike and well, as most of us are amateurs, a lot of us don't race. It's, you would think it's something that's not too important, but you know, you like to have fun with your friends. You like to sprint the final part of a hill, especially when you're out the saddle. And, the connectivity from out the saddle and when you drive, it's, well, it's nice on this bike. I'm not gonna say it's as electric as some other bikes that I've ridden, but most certainly it's not slow in, by any means. If the bike just lets you do what you want to do with it. If you wanna sprint, it will let you sprint and you just push and push and push. And because you don't feel like you get as tired out the saddle on this bike, it lets you keep going. Another thing I found on this bike when you're sprinting is I find it makes it really easy to hold the chest close to the bars while still getting the power out. Now, I don't know if this is a geometry thing, but man, it just makes it very easy to hold a really tight position while sprinting. It's just me out here today, so unfortunately I can't get any B-roll to show that, but I'm sure many of you will know what I mean because aerodynamics when you're sprinting is probably one of the most, well, is the most important factor. Let's chat about the cool factor on this bike. And the cool factor is, well, do you like to look at yourself in the shop window kind of thing because you think you look really cool on the bike? And the answer is less so on this bike. I feel like I'm not looking at as many shop windows and seem to be enjoying the scenery a bit more on this thing. Now, is that a bad thing? Not for one second. I just think the bike blends in a little bit more. And if I was to use this in another car analogy, I would describe it like the Audi RS6. You know, people that know that it's like an elite level bike, no. But people that don't, don't necessarily know that it's a hyper fast, very agile bike. So it just blends into its environment very well. But I think it's a really cool looking bike. Whilst the frame shapes themselves might be different and unique, I will say I really like the paint job on this bike. This kind of like flattish but electric blue. And then as you fade to the back here, this beautiful straight fade. I'm trying to get it in the sun, but you can see the carbon weave underneath here and it's beautiful. I actually really love seeing the carbon weave underneath the black parts of a paint job. I think there's a reason it probably scores a little bit lower on the cool factor. And that reason might be because, well, the design of the bike, it's more function over form. You know, it's purely designed to do the job it needs to do. And it doesn't make it ugly by any means, but also doesn't make it the sexiest bike in the world. Now the question is, does any of these things take away from the fun factor of the bike? And the answer is absolutely not. I mean, you really get back what you put into this thing. If you're just putting in for a chill ride and going easy, it will give you that. If you're trying to pump energy in and go fast and push hard, it will let you do that and it will give you the energy back on the bike here. So 
it doesn't matter where you go in this thing, you're gonna have hell of a lot of fun. Bikes are definitely becoming better at doing it all, and this is one of them, you know, really lets you just have a great time everywhere you go. If you took this to the mountains, it's gonna thrive. If you took this to the flats, it's gonna thrive. And well, yeah, for the fun factor, it just does well. Whilst I knock off the speed here, if I was gonna describe this bike in one word, that word would have to be, if these cars can go, uncompromised. The bike just seems to kind of give a shot at everything, you know, it's trying to be comfortable, it's trying to be light, it's trying to be aero. And I have to say, I think it's succeeded in everything. It's, it's a jack of all trades, but to a really high standard on this thing. And it's just made everything I've wanted to do very easy to do so. If I want to be out of the saddle, I can push out the saddle. If I want to ride slowly and easy and talk to you like I am now, well, it's just happy to do that because it's comfortable enough to do so. If I'm trying to really push for some speed, I can just hold in really aero position, hold that speed. If I want to sprint, it doesn't matter where you are, you can just go on this thing. I've really liked it. I know I've already given you my one word, but if you were to gift me another, the other word I'd use to describe this bike is stable, you know? In the winds, it's just unaffected. When you're out the saddle, it just seems very comfortable going over, but really direct in the direction that it wants to go. It doesn't matter where you lean it, it still wants to go forwards. But that doesn't affect it around the corners either, but when you start to straighten up, it straightens up really easily. And the effect really becomes notable when you're climbing and when you're sprinting. When you're climbing, you just seem to be able to hold a dead solid position and just get the power down. And that goes with the sprinting as well. It does, you can basically sprint in a dead straight line, where some other bikes I find I'm weaving over the place a little bit, but not in this one, dead straight. Well guys, there's been my review of the Factor Ostro van. Let me know what you think. If you've ridden this bike, how have you got along with it? Like I said, I think it's extremely versatile. Do everything, go fast anywhere. And it's one that I've really had a lot of fun riding. I've been Jason, this has been Cycling Unboxed. I'll see you in another video.